Hello humans and welcome back to another episode of Sparks Conversation. I hope you're well, wherever you are in this world, whatever you're doing, it's a great day. It's another cold one. My lips are chapped, my nose is running and I'm probably on the brink of being ill but it is what it is and we move. At the time of recording this podcast, it is the 10th of December which means that we are pretty much in full swing of festivities of Christmas. For some of you, that might be a bit early, but for some of us, it might be a bit late. I don't really care about Christmas because I'm a bit of a robot, but I get on with it. I'm moving on. For a lot of people, it's a tricky situation because the point of this podcast is to talk about whether you should be dying at dieting, not dying. No one wants to be dying at Christmas, but dieting at Christmas because dieting at Christmas is obviously going to be more trickier. And this needs to be thought about in a longer term context. If the thing that you're wanting to diet for is pretty soon after Christmas, maybe a wedding, a birthday, you might want to try and diet over Christmas. I say diet in quotation marks because for most people who are normal, it's probably not going to be that much of a successful diet. And again, successful in, in quotation marks because you will be faced with a lot of friction. And by friction, I mean social events. The food environment changes completely. At no other point of the year is there just chocolate and cheese absolutely everywhere. And what this does is it layers friction on top of what might already be a hard thing for you to do, diet. What you'll find yourself in is a situation that is 10 times harder than a normal situation, 10 times harder than if you're dieting in summer or spring or autumn, because in no, at no other time of the year, apart from your body potentially, does your food environment and every environment that you normally are in change completely. It all sides with winter, which is cold, and Innately, we think that we need to eat more or we just feel like we want to eat more during winter because we get that kind of dopamine from the food we eat. And all of these things layer on top of each other to make it really hard. You need to weigh it up. For a lot of my clients at the moment, I'm thinking about if we are still dieting at the moment, let's just think about how we can make this period as normal as possible whilst managing your calories. It goes less to a point of optimize this diet during this period, but instead let's just damage limitation and take everything with a pinch of salt. It is Christmas, it is one time of the year. It's not gonna necessarily completely train retro fat loss unless you eat like a child. And again, I've spoken about it. If we manage our calories accordingly, calories are just like money and we can borrow them, we can lend them, we can save them, we can spend them. All of these things can be used to manage the Christmas period. And of course, so many people are gonna be like, you shouldn't be promoting diet culture. Shut up. People do want to diet. People want to change their body shape. Newsflash, you'll have to be in a calorie deficit for that. And if one of these wishy-washy panel trainers wants to come along and say, oh, but you're promoting poor eating habits. It is what it is. It's an approach and you do need to eat in a calorie deficit. And if the client wants to lose body fat and they want to do it over winter, that's absolutely fine. That is their decision. I'm going to support them in that. Sidetrack ended. You need to weigh up what the actual outcome of this period is going to be. Like, is it in your control to have everything robotically operated and managed? If you were me, for example, if yes, fine, carry on as usual, manage it, progress. If it's something that you're new to and it's already something that's cheating for you, it might be asking a little bit too much for you to be dieting at Christmas. However, what this does do is it can help you make things a little bit in January if you don't come back in a really compromised state. And I say compromise very loosely in the sense that if you come back from Christmas and you've gained three, four, five kilograms, first of all, what? It doesn't matter that much. But if you limit that period, it's limit that kind of scale that come, you come back with, you could potentially set yourself back you could set yourself up better for January if you're looking to continue your diet. And this is all said with a pinch of salt. Like it's all completely person dependent and ready to what you're trying to achieve. Like if you're trying to do a bodybuilding show or a photo shoot, by all means, sacrifice Christmas. Like your goal is bigger than the, the things that you're sacrificing. But if you're a normal person and it's you want to spend time with your family, friends, and that is true quality time that you value and you deem as high value. Who am I as your coach to say, don't do it? All I can do is give you the tools to manage them. And we have to accept that those things or those things that you are not sizing on will have a consequence on the outcome that you're trying to achieve. They might slow down your fat loss. They might worsen, your, that's not even a word, might 
reduce your recovery capabilities. They might pull away from your training performance, but that is a trade-off that you're willing to make. Again, it's very client-centered. You need to decide what is important to you and how this is going to impact your enjoyment of this time of year. Because at the end of the day, if you're not enjoying the thing that you're doing, you won't want to do it. But if you missing out on a few, well, mate, all of the social occasions at Christmas because you're dieting, it is not going to mean that you stick to it in the long run. Do not do it. But if it's something that you feel like you can manage and it's not going to take away from your experience of this time of year, by all means, crack on and do it. That is today's podcast. That's how I personally go about thinking about managing the Christmas period. At the end of the day, it's completely up to you what you do. It's completely it's completely under your control whether you manage your calories or you don't. Just understand that what you do has a positive or a negative consequence and therefore it feeds into your physique, your performance, your recovery in the long term. If you have any questions about Christmas, just let me know. But other than that, I hope you have a great day, a great life wherever you are in this world and I'll see you in the next episode.